So here we are this morning. It's a Saturday morning. I'm down, down in Williamstown in a cafe, and I've uh, got the pleasure of catching up with James Dalton, who is the principal from Neil Dalton Consulting. Uh, I've known James for a long time, uh, but I actually knew his dad prior to that, and, and uh, Neil used to be the uh, trust candidate for my real estate agency. So what I wanted to do now, and we're actually both joined, uh, we're foundation members of the Real Estate Resources Group, which is a, a collective of real estate business service providers that have come together to try and help the industry both throughout Australia and also New Zealand. So welcome, James. Good morning. Uh, good morning, Michael. Thanks for uh, inviting me along to Williamstown this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've got, I'm in a cafe and I've got, uh, I've got some people in the background and uh, they're probably looking at me going, what the hell is that guy doing? I've got noise going on in the background, so hopefully you're all okay. But I just want to have a quick yeah. chat with you this morning. And uh, um, as you know, uh, from my side of things as a consultant, I spend a lot of time on making sure businesses uh, are compliant, but probably none more than you. So I, I always look to the auditor for guidance. And uh, so tell me a little bit, if you can, maybe just break this simply right down. What is an auditor and what do the what, what is your role um, within a business um, from a real estate point of view, from both sales and property management? What is it that you do? Okay, sure. Well, let, let's start with firstly, what is a trust account auditor? So okay. Excellent. So under the uh, under the various legislations that exist in the various jurisdictions of Australia, um, a trust account order is is effectively someone who has an accountancy qualification, but more importantly, um, they're a member of uh, typically the three big industry associations, which is um, uh, chartered accountant, uh, CPA, or the Institute of Public Accountants. So. If you don't have a postgraduate qualification um, like one of those, um, then you can't actually be a trust account auditor within the real estate industry. So that's effectively the bar and everyone, any, anyone who wants to act in this role in the industry has to have a postgraduate qualification from one of those organizations. So, so why wouldn't uh, an agency just simply use their uh, general accountant, the, the one that, that, that's looking after their BAS and their PAYG and, and their tax planning. Why wouldn't somebody just say, why do I need to have an external real estate trust accountant auditor and not just my normal? So, so why, what, yeah, maybe. That's a, that, yeah, that's a really good question, uh, Michael. It's a question that I get asked uh, quite often, uh, particularly by people that are coming to me um, with, you know, uh, potentially to be a new client. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Best way to answer that is uh, an accountant um, who works for the business is providing a series of services to that business on a monthly basis, okay? So when you're conducting an audit, you're actually providing an opinion on the business. And that opinion may not actually be um, a, an opinion that the client actually wants. So let's talk, let's talk about the opinion. So in, in, um, yeah, in a trust account audit, there are two types of opinions. There's an unqualified opinion and a qualified opinion. Now, an un unqualified opinion is a clean audit opinion where everything is okay and there are no breaches. Uh, a qualified audit opinion um, is an opinion where there are breaches of the legislation and those breaches are set out in the audit. Now, if you're the accountant, for that business and you're providing services to that business, you, are, you have a conflict of interest because you're actually receiving money for those services. But if you do the audit and then you issue a qualified audit opinion, you may be under pressure from the client to actually change that to an unqualified opinion because you have that qualified, you have that conflict of interest. Um, you know, I think, uh, we all have a role to play in the industry. Accountants provide a tremendous, um, uh, tremendous support for all of our businesses in the industry. Um, but the trust account auditor, auditor's role is to be independent sure. and to be totally free of any conflicts. Okay. But I guess the question there, James, and not to put you on the spot, is that um, you're also paid. So, you, yes. so, so there's, a, there's a fee there as well. So it's not as though you're Absolutely. a government service, that's, so you're also paid. That, that's right. I'm, I'm also paid as well. Um, but from my perspective, um, if I need to issue an, a, a qualified audit opinion, and I do issue them from time to time, um, 
there, there have been circumstances, you know, in the past where a client didn't necessarily agree with my qualified opinion. Yes. Um, and, and ultimately, in the end, um, you know, the client can choose whether to continue with me as their auditor or go with someone else sure. as a result of that. In the end, I have to be true or, or any auditor has to be true um, to the legislation and to the ethics um, that they're bound by from their industry organisation. Yeah. So from my perspective, um, you know, it's really important. Uh, I, 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 I value those ethics and um, they're important to me. Yeah. And in the end, uh, you know, if you lose a client along the way, um, then, then, then that might happen. But what I would say is this, the really good auditors uh, work with their clients. They're very practical. Yes. Um, they identify issues and they work with the client to assist them to fix those issues. And from the government's perspective, um, they're okay with having a qualified audit. Um, what they want to see is they want to see action. They want to see a client actually fix those issues. And if a client fixes those issues, then government will be more than satisfied. Perfect. Mate, to simplify it, though, I, I, that was a very eloquent explanation. I'm probably a little bit simpler when, in my approach to when a client asks me, why don't I just use the accountant rather than using that? And I say quite simply is that your accountant doesn't understand the legislation. The accountant isn't <laughs> all around the, yes. uh, the real estate component. So I try and... Um, yes. I, uh, probably not giving the right uh, information, but I, I simply say, try and get the right person to fit the role that you need. And, and if your accountant is an expert in real estate law, yeah. legislation, trust account law, if your accountant is an expert there, then by all means use them. If not, then let's bring in an external or an, an independent auditor. I think, I, think, I think you're making a really good point there. I think that, uh, as you know, Michael, my business is uh, solely in real estate. Yes. Um, I don't operate in any other industry. Uh, so I have, um, you know, I'm fortunate in that I have deep industry knowledge. Um, and my father was previously the CEO of the Estate Agents Board back in the day. Yeah. So, you know, I have the benefit of all that knowledge. And you're right, um, many, many of the accountants, uh, they're more generalists. They work across industries rather than specific to, to an industry. So your point's well made. Fantastic. Mate, thank you very much for uh, joining me this morning. I've uh, really enjoyed the chat. Hopefully that uh, if anyone wants to get in touch with you, uh, it's uh, neildaltonconsulting.com.au. Is that the website? That's right, neildaltonconsulting.com.au. Excellent. Thanks, Thank mate. You. Enjoy the rest of your day. Hello. Yeah, you too. Bye.